Hello friends, it's me, and today, let them fight. Let's check out Film Theory. Godzilla's and Kong Snake's fight could be the last. Godzilla x Kong finish the fight. From the Film Theorists, together, let's go, mm, finish him. Out of all of the cinematic universes from the 2010s, no one expected Godzilla and Kong to be the one to reign supreme at the box office this year. What can I say? People like to see giant monsters fight. But do you know what would make that even better? These giant monsters fighting giant robot mech suits. And that, my friends, is exactly where the MonsterVerse is headed. Oh. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory. The no, 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 no. Film X Theory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Show that wants you to take a kaiju sized bite out of that subscribe button. Subscribe. So, after. Hey. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory. Hi. <laughs> Struggling a bit during the past decade, Godzilla's been having a really big year, huh? Fan-driven projects like Unknowingly's The Man in the Suit have been blowing up on YouTube. The Japanese film Godzilla Minus One was a huge hit and won the franchise its first Oscar. Monarch of Legacy of the Monsters was one of Apple TV's biggest hits last year. And the latest MonsterVerse movie, Godzilla Kong The New Empire, is the second biggest movie of the year so far, leaving audiences chomping at the bit for more. And hey, I get it. When your movie features a giant monkey with a rope, oh, I got that reference. I got that reference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Robot arm fist fighting. Met pet and FNAF. A dinosaur lizard that eats radiation on the pyramids of Giza, it's kind of hard not to be a crowd pleaser. No doubt, Godzilla and Kong are having a moment in pop culture, and everyone involved is tripling down on it. The team behind Minus One have started work on another film, Monarch is moving ahead with a second season and multiple spin-off shows, and most importantly for us today, Hollywood is hard at work on a script for the follow-up to Godzilla Kong, and that is Lisa Giza versus Big Monkey. It's exciting. I love these big dumb movies about big dumb monsters fighting, so any chance we get to talk about them, I'm in. We've done shorts about Godzilla Kong, we've made officially licensed Godzilla Kong apparel. It's high time we revisit this series with a good old-fashioned theory, a prediction about what's to come. Because let me tell you, there are so many hints in this latest movie about their future plans that based solely on what we see in Godzilla Kong The New Empire, and what we almost didn't see, we can predict exactly where the future of this franchise is headed. Here's a hint for you, the next kaiju that Godzilla and Kong are going to be fighting will be out of this world. And what's no. more, they won't be alone. There's a third franchise about to cross over into the MonsterVerse, and this one has some big dumb giant robots. <sighs> Charge your atomic breath and equip your robot hands, loyal theorists. It's time to lay the smack down on the future of the MonsterVerse. So in case you need a quick refresher on the let's surprisingly go. complicated lore of the MonsterVerse, let's get on the same page. In this world, there are giant monsters collectively known as Titans. They've always been here in one form or another and likely inspired most of the gods and demons of ancient cultures. Many of these titans are intelligent. Some are good, others evil, some are just like big wild feral animals. The most powerful of these is Godzilla, the king of the monsters, who basically keeps all of the others in check, but has been in hibernation for potentially millions of years. That time frame is really frustratingly unclear. Meanwhile, there's also a large species of giant apes worshipped by early human civilization that have been pushed to the brink of extinction. Only one remains, known as Kong, who has lived most of his life on the isolated Skull Island. Cut to the 20th century, where nuclear testing awakens Godzilla, and Kong is discovered on Skull Island by explorers connected to a mysterious Titan researching organization called Monarch. Cue several movies of Godzilla and Kong fighting and or teaming up with one another, humans or other Titans. And we end up at the current status quo of Godzilla roaming the surface of the Earth, keeping Titans in check, while Kong looks after a giant cavern in the Earth's crust known as Hollow Earth. Yeah, Hollow Earth is a thing in this world, just, just roll with it. That leads us into Godzilla Kong, the new empire, which sees Kong discovering more giant monkeys in Hollow Earth, led by an evil monkey called the Scar King. You can tell this guy is bad news because he dropkicks Baby Kong's dad into lava. Anyway, Scar King has a magic crystal that lets him control another new ice titan named Shimo, whom he leads to the surface to start a brand new 
Ice Age and kill off humanity once and for all. This understandably makes Godzilla angry, leading to a big team-up that leaves the Scar King dead, Shimo freed, and Kong the new king of the Hollow Earth. All the while, the human characters from Monarch are also there, and the filmmakers really try to make us like them to mixed results. I mean, this is a movie where Kong uses a giant baby monkey as a baseball bat. We're not supposed to care about Trapper, Ishiro Shirazawa, or Dr. Irene Andrews. I can prove it, because one of those characters isn't in this movie, and you probably didn't notice. So that's what's happened, but what happens next? Where are the next Godzilla and Kong movies headed, and what sort of monsters will they be fighting? Well, I- Mission space. Why space? I believe the answer lies in the latest dangling thread introduced in Godzilla Kong, the weird magic crystals. Yeah, these crystals were a sort of recurring story element in this movie. The Iwu people, native to Hollow Earth, use these crystals as a sort of power source that reacts to bioelectricity in the same way that Godzilla's spines charge up his atomic breath. This is partially what leads to the cool zero-gravity fight halfway through the movie. Additionally, a similar- It's pretty cool. It's actually pretty cool. Zero-gravity fights? Incredible. Their sort of crystal is at the end of the whip used by Scar King. Remember that awesome weapon made out of like a kaiju spine? Yeah, that crystal at the end there seems to give him some sort of telepathic control over the ice kaiju Shimo. I'm so sorry, I'm still, I'm still thinking about zero gravity fights. It's like, wow. Implying that it's the same sort of crystal used by the Iwu, since their crystals let them communicate telepathically and send out distress signals to the surface world. Once that crystal on Scar's whip is destroyed, Shimo is freed and turns on Scar, teaming up with Godzilla and Kong to kill him. But what is this? Wait a minute, if you, think, if you really think about it right, the, the zero gravity fights is... Okay, I'm so sorry. Let's get, let's get back to the video. Sorry. Thing. What are any of these crystals? Well, one possibility, they're the remnants of a meteor. See, all throughout Godzilla Kong, we're told that the Iwu call Godzilla the monster who ate a star. Godzilla. A star, and especially one that has fallen to Earth enough to be eaten by Godzilla, is almost certainly how an ancient civilization would interpret a meteor impact, especially one that Godzilla somehow stopped or incorporated into his body so he could charge up his atomic breath. Additionally, we see Godzilla survive a similar meteor impact on Earth in the comic book Godzilla Awakening, published in 2014. Though it should be said that this was one of the first bits of extended monsterverse material and has since been contradicted by later films, so it's probably not canon anymore. That being said, it does tell us that Godzilla and how he interacts with meteors has been on the minds of the people behind the monsterverse since basically the beginning. It wouldn't be surprising that this element got recycled in later stories like in The New Empire. But real quick, let's take a moment to talk about another titan, the sponsor for today's theory, Incogni. Tell me, have you ever noticed that out of nowhere it seems like you're getting a ton of spam emails or calls? Well, that happens because sometimes big corporations can have their databases of millions of customers hacked, or companies can just sell your information to make a quick buck. There are literally thousands of data brokers out there collecting and trading your personal information without your knowledge or consent. And we're not just talking about your email, guys. Everything from your full name and address to your phone and social security numbers. Thankfully, you can request that these data brokers delete your information and they have to comply. But the bad news is that it can take a long time to do it manually, long enough that you might as well go hibernate like Godzilla. This is where Incogni comes in. These guys do all of the heavy lifting for you. Just grant them permission and Incogni will be fighting these data brokers like they're a bunch of kaiju while you just sit back and relax. We've actually partnered with Incogni before and true story, after after the first time we worked with them, I thought, hey, why not? So I signed up for the service myself. No joke, they have gotten my information removed from over 110 databases and are working on over 100 more. Sending in all of those requests manually would have taken me literally 86 hours. And my email inbox has just been night and day. There's been so little spam. If you want to keep your personal data private, go to incogni.com slash film theory and use the code film theory to get 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Again, 
Again, that's incogni.com slash F-I-L-M-T-H-E-O-R-Y, or just click the link in the description if you don't want to type all that out, and use code Film Theory for 60% off an annual plan. Thanks again to Incogni, and now let's wade back into the water with Godzilla and Kong. Now, those meteors might be all well and good, but why does it matter? Why do these magic crystals being actually a meteor mean anything? Well, to classic kaiju fans, Godzilla plus crystals plus meteors adds up to one thing. Space, space Godzilla. <laughs> if you don't know, Space Godzilla is, well, I mean, it's exactly what's written on the tin. He's an alien clone of Godzilla from outer space and the primary villain of Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Really, these movies just get right to the point, don't they? The whole shtick of this guy was that some of Godzilla's blood merges with an alien made of crystal, creating a new hybrid creature bent on taking over the Earth. That sounds exactly like the sort of bad guy they'd fight in the MonsterVerse, right? An alien titan who wants to conquer the world. And hey, if you think that aliens are just a step too far here, remember that this is already a thing in the MonsterVerse. We learn in Godzilla King of the Monsters that King Ghidorah is an alien. It tells of a great dragon who fell from the stars. Well, you mean an alien? Yes, he's not part of our natural order. Fell from the stars, huh? Doesn't that sound an awful lot like the language used by the Iwu to describe Godzilla, the monster who ate a star? All of the stars are aligning here and pointing to Space Godzilla as the next true big bad that Godzilla and Kong will have to beat into submission. But no, Space Godzilla, seriously? <laughs> That being said, there's one big old monkey wrench we have to throw into this particular scenario. What if Legendary Pictures, the people who make these movies, can't actually use Space Godzilla? See, Legendary only outright owns the rights to their version of Kong and the original Titans created for these movies. The classic Japanese kaiju from the Godzilla franchise, including Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidorah, and the King of the Monsters himself, those are all owned by Toho, the Japanese studio that originally created them decades ago. Any and every time Legendary wants to use them in the MonsterVerse, they have to license them from Toho. In fact, it was big news when Legendary confirmed that they'd secured the licenses for Ghidorah, Rodan, and Mothra to join the MonsterVerse. And while the price tag for these monsters is in public, it does not come cheap. For this latest Godzilla Kong, scenes involving Mothra were actually shot using an entirely different original character as a placeholder, just in case they couldn't get the clearance to use Mothra again. And this wasn't just some corporate standoffishness, there was a real chance that that was gonna happen. After the disaster that was the 1998 American Godzilla movie, Toho is notoriously protective of their characters and IP, and even if they cleared the use of Godzilla for a movie, that doesn't necessarily mean that they'd do the same for any of the other kaiju. That's a really big what if to hang your hundred million dollar movie on, given that the rug could get pulled out from under you at any point. So what's Legendary's solution here? Well, there are a couple directions that could take to sort of work around this problem if they don't get the rights to any of Godzilla's other famous foes. They could either invent their own new enemies for Godzilla and Kong to fight, or they could pull in something they do have the rights to. Now, that first option, absolutely valid, and after all, that is what has been done for the MonsterVerse with the Scar King, Shimo, Scylla, and Tiamat. But those characters were just... Fine. Not really super exciting or memorable, if we're honest. In fact, there were a lot of people who thought and hoped that Scylla, the big crab thing that Godzilla fought the last couple of movies, was actually Kumonga, another part of his classic rogues gallery. So sure, Legendary could create new monsters, their own version of Space Godzilla for Kong and Godzilla to fight. Or they could go with option number two, another crossover with something that they do have the rights to. But I wonder, what could that be? Two words, loyal theorists. Pacific Rim. Today we are canceling the apocalypse! If you don't remember Pacific Rim, that's an absolute tragedy. This was one of the coolest movies of the 2010s, all about a world under constant assault by alien kaiju coming out of a portal at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. To fight them, humanity developed giant robot mech suits called Jaegers, piloted by two or more humans psychically linked. Though the film struggled at the box office, it was a huge hit with critics, audiences, and industry professionals. And the best- and the the thing is, this is a, like, a, 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 this awesome, awesome, from 11 years ago, more than a decade ago, wow. 
parts for Legendary, they outright own the Pacific Rim IP, everything in it, and have tried multiple times to continue it with sequels and spin-off shows. Plus, franchise creator Guillermo del Toro and the sequel's director Steven DeKnight have independently said that they want Pacific Rim to cross over into the MonsterVerse. There is a real interest in continuing this franchise from everyone involved. No giant legal loopholes to jump through? And what better way to juice it up than connecting it with the other biggest kaiju IP on the planet, Godzilla and Kong? But hold up, even if this makes business sense, why would it make story sense? Why would I say that Pacific Rim is set to cross over at all here? Well, there are a lot of signs towards this crossover happening, all from the new empire alone. Firstly, after Godzilla wakes up from his catnap in Rome, we get a brief glimpse of a wall covered in graffiti, almost all of which are easter eggs to other kaiju movies. But over here on the side, we can see a crude rendition of Pacific Rim's most famous kaiju, Knifehead. That right there is again proof that Pacific Rim was on the minds of these filmmakers and that it hasn't been forgotten by Legendary. But that's just one easter egg on a wall covered in them. It's not like it's outright proof that Monarch is like developing Jaeger mechs or anything, right? No, of course not. That happens later in the movie. Yeah, you know that cool robot hand power-up that Kong is given about halfway through the movie? As its backstory is being explained, we get a real good look at the blueprints for the device. And what do you know? They're the blueprints for Gypsy Danger, the Jaeger mech that was the poster robot for Pacific Rim. And it's not- It's fucking- <laughs> Not like it just kind of looks like Gypsy Danger, they are straight up the same robot. If you pause this scene and zoom in on the details here written on the blueprints, they explain that the robot arm will feature stuff like a retractable chainsword and a switchblade mod, things used in the actual Pacific Rim movie. Little details like that being put in Godzilla Kong were not an accident. Bits of lore have been communicated to us in these sorts of blink and you miss it moments before, and this is canonical proof that the humans in this world are developing giant mech suits. Now, obviously, the world set up in Pacific Rim is impossible to integrate into the MonsterVerse as is. As cool as it would be, we're not going to see these characters or mechs or kaiju literally pop in from a portal from the Pacific Rimiverse. If anything, it would be sort of a soft reboot bringing in elements from Pacific Rim to fit within the MonsterVerse, but disconnected from the old films. But all of the pieces needed are there. We just proved that Monarch has developed blueprints for a mech. Tech exists in the Monsterverse monsterverse that can link minds, a la the Jaeger pilots in Pacific Rim, as we see with Rin Serizawa connecting his mind with Ghidorah's in Godzilla vs. Kong, which hey, wouldn't you know it, is similar to story elements involving Charlie Day's character from Pacific Rim. We know that Monarch is concerned about relying solely on Kong to protect humanity, After Mechagodzilla, we realized that there were some threats that even Kong couldn't face. Thus giving them motivation to make the mechs. And most importantly, thematically, we're at a point in the story where the general public is probably fed up with these kaiju destroying their cities, and they might want a real way for humans to fight back. I mean, just look at what happened in the New Empire. Sure, a new Ice Age got averted, and the Scar King caught a pretty well-deserved beatdown, but Monarch did an awful job at trying to keep these monsters in check, and any explanation for this latest victory probably isn't gonna fly. Like, could you imagine? Ah uh, yes, it was worth Godzilla and Kong destroying the pyramids and most of downtown Rio to kill one big giant monkey. Humanity is going to want something that isn't a giant lizard with anger issues or a great ape who speaks sign language to help them fight back against the next threat. Plus, piloted mechs would give the human characters that no one cares about something exciting to do. Like, might as well if Legendary insists on shoving them into every single one of these movies. Oh, and the best part? The cherry on top? This would even fit in the same story as Space Godzilla. The plot- Wait, how? of the original Japanese Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla sees the King of the Monsters team up with a human-made robot named Mogura to defeat the Big Bad. That is literally what we've just seen the MonsterVerse put all of the pieces in place for. This series is headed for a crossover with Pacific Rim. Monarch is going to develop Jaeger mechs, using the same Neuralink drift technology used to connect a human brain with Ghidorah to pilot Mecha Godzilla, but this time with two humans piloting a giant robot. Space Godzilla, or some original Original knockoff monster will come to Earth with. Hello, my name is Super Duper Space <laughs> Godzilla Chan. Original name, please don't steal. Please. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
kaiju minions like Knifehead, and using the same mind control crystal magic they set up in the new Empire, they'll pit Godzilla vs. Kong once again, forcing the new Jaeger mechs into action. They'll fight and destroy another irreplaceable world landmark before teaming up against Space Godzilla and saving the world. Well, at least until the next time they need a monster hit at the box office. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory! And cut! And if you want another Godzilla Kong theory right now, check out our video where we explain the Godzilla vs. Kong movie we didn't get to see. Well, thank you so much. It was so much fun watching this theory. It's like, wow, wow. <laughs> but hey, that's just a theory. A game, a film. One more time, huh? But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. <laughs> And I hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you so much. Subscribe.